This video is brought to you by rvgenset.com. Hey guys, Sean with Long Long Honeymoon. Today we have a very interesting RV product to show you guys, a generator. You've been wanting me to review a champion generator so we purchased this champion 75537i which is an inverter generator it puts out 3100 starting watts and 2800 running watts of power and this is equipped with a remote electric start This video is not sponsored by Champion. We bought this ourselves. If you're interested in purchasing one of these generators, you can check out the link in the YouTube description. Clicking that link will take you to the relevant Amazon page for it, and you can read a bunch of other reviews from other owners of the generator. I've unboxed the generator. I de-stickered it, got off a bunch of those California stickers. Apparently, according to California attorneys, Inhaling generator exhaust fumes could be hazardous to your health. And I think you probably shouldn't drink the gasoline either, but I didn't see a sticker about that. So some California attorney out there, you need to get on that problem. First up, this is an inverter generator. That means it's relatively quiet and it generates clean sine wave power that's safe for your sensitive electronics. Now, the unboxing and setup of this thing is pretty easy and straightforward. They give you some charge cables that you can use with the 12 volt DC power. They also give you a little USB charge adapter that you can use with the generator to charge your smartphones and so forth. This is the remote for that remote electric start that we're going to demonstrate in just a minute. They do not give you oil. There is a five hour break-in period for this unit. Uh, Champion recommends that you fill the generator with oil. It takes about 19 ounces. You fill it up with fresh gasoline. You connect the battery, and that's probably the trickiest part of the whole setup. You have to undo this little service panel on one end of the generator. And when you undo the service panel inside, the battery is held in place by a rubber strap. I recommend that you undo that rubber strap. You just gotta cut a, a couple of zip ties and attach the battery cables, and you're all set up to go for your break-in period. Run the generator for five hours under variable load, less than 50% load. I tested the generator with my wife's jet engine of a hairdryer that actually demands about 2,000 watts of power at its max uh, settings. So I could easily fluctuate the load on the generator by turning on and off the heat of the hairdryer and so forth. But after five hours, you get to do your first oil change on the unit and then you're good to go and champion says that you can go about 100 hours on this generator in between oil changes so let's come in a little closer and take a look at the control panel and some of the features that are unique to this unit starting on the left you'll see a pull start it does have a traditional pull start option that will come in handy if your battery is ever dead. More on that in a moment. To the left, we have our fuel supply lever, which we will turn to on. There's a choke button instead of a choke lever. On the top, you'll see an ignition switch. Like many inverters, this does have an economy mode, which when engaged will throttle down the unit and make it a lot quieter and also conserve your fuel. Beneath the economy mode switch, you'll find a button to set up additional wireless remotes. And in the center of the generator, we've got our little warning lights. Uh, you can pay special attention to the overload light, which hopefully we don't see when we run our air conditioner. And you'll also see the low oil light. I mean, if the generator starts using oil, you might see that. Prominently featured on this generator, hallelujah, is an RV ready outlet. No adapter required. So you can just plug your 30 amp plug from your RV directly into the generator without having to mess around 
with a locking adapter. We have a couple of 20 amp outlets and there's a little uh, reset switch uh, on top and bottom here. It's kind of a circuit breaker. Here's your 12 volt DC plug. You can always plug in this little adapter if you want to charge your tablets, your smartphones, and so forth. And the upper right is another unique feature of this generator. This is a battery on off switch. You need to have this battery turned on if you want to use the electric start. You have to have your battery on. Then you can simply push a switch. And don't forget to do your choke. So now the generator is running without the economy mode engaged. And there it is with the economy mode. So you can hear that it throttled down so it's quieter and will be uh, conserving fuel. And then you can turn off the generator just pushing the button. Now, the second and arguably more interesting way is with the remote electric start. And you can see on the remote, you have a simple two button layout, start and stop. When you're boondocking, you can just get up in your bathrobe, point it outside at your generator, and fire it up and have power. So, pretty cool. So, if I decide I want to turn it off, if you have the battery switch on when the generator is running the battery will recharge thankfully champion has a light behind the battery switch to kind of remind you that it is on so this thing dry weighs around 96 to 98 pounds something like that but when you add gasoline and oil i think it gets up to around 108 pounds so it's kind of at the limits of what you really want to lift <laughs> for most people. You probably wouldn't want to run a 5K carrying this thing, but you can lift it. It's equipped with a wheel kit, and these wheels are never flat wheels, so you don't have to worry about reinflating a flat tire on your generator. You got a fold-up handle that you can use with the wheel kit to roll the generator. On the top of the generator, you've got two nice grab handles, so two people can easily lift the generator and carry it. The exterior case is plastic. On the top, you have a large fuel cap, and inside the fuel cap, you've got a fuel filter, and this generator has a 1.6 gallon gasoline capacity. I believe that someone out there has engineered a kit that will allow you to use more fuel. Now, there is no fuel gauge on top of the generator, so you're just going to be left guessing when uh, the fuel tank might be dry. Champion says you can get about eight hours of life running the generator at, I suppose, a quarter load. Also missing on this generator is any kind of hours meter. There's no hours meter. There's no LCD display showing you what percentage of power is being used. Now, if an hours meter is really important to you, you can add an hour meter really inexpensively to this unit. I believe they cost around 15 bucks. If you're interested in picking one up, there will be a link and the YouTube description for this video. One limitation of the generator, it cannot be paralleled. So you can't link this generator together with another generator. It's relatively short in terms of vertical height. It will easily fit under a tonneau cover in the bed of a pickup truck. So we're going to do a little testing. Uh, first up, we're going to turn on the battery and 
just because it's fun, uh, I want to use the remote start. So. We do not have the economy mode engaged at the moment. Next up, we're gonna plug in our Airstream to the RV Ready outlet. We have power. The big challenge, of course, is going to be the air conditioning unit. So we're going to fire up the AC first, without being in economy mode. Next, we'll start it with the economy mode engaged. We have not shut off the refrigerator, so it's currently powering the refrigerator, and it is also reducing our Airstream's batteries. So, real world test. All right, I'm currently inside the Airstream, and I'm kicking on the AC, toggling it to cool, I'm setting it on low fan and let's say a cool 68 degrees so here comes the AC it's firing up and it's running and it didn't really skip a beat all right guys so the generator is currently powering our air conditioner. It's running right now on high fan. The economy mode is turned off. So I'm gonna turn on the economy mode. And then throttle down and got, get a bit quieter. Significantly. It's a lot quieter. Yeah. The wife says it's a lot quieter. So my next test, we're gonna see if it will start the air conditioner with the economy mode on. Okay, so we'll see if that overloads it for any reason. All right, so I just turned off the air conditioner. Now I'm turning it back on and we'll see what happens. All right, I heard it rev up just a bit. Didn't really get significantly louder. All right, so next we're gonna do a little test of the remote electric start. With a push of the button. Ah, uh, that's nice. So, it works very well. You really only have to tap the button once. You don't have to hold it in. There we go. <laughs> Here we have our digital sound level meter. And we're gonna do just a little test. I have it pointed at the generator. Let's take a look maybe if we can at the, the screen. So you can see uh, the normal noise level out here is around 41 decibels, 42 decibels. But when I speak, of course, the decibel count jumps up. So what we're gonna do is start the generator with economy mode on and we're gonna see how it does. All right. So it's clocking right in exactly where they said it would between 57 and 59 decibels. Now I'm going to turn off the economy mode. So it's roughly 62 decibels with the economy mode off. Now the next test will be what happens with the sound when we have the AC going inside. Let me double check. So roughly 65, 66 decibels. This should be about as loud as the generator ever gets because that's pretty much a full load. Every time I do some kind of noise test, some of you out there criticize my methodology. Look, I am not running a NASA research lab here, okay? <laughs> uh, obviously this is an imperfect test 
we're sort of uh, using these instruments the best we can under the circumstances, but we're outside. You know, some guy's mowing his lawn down the road. There's birds and planes flying overhead. There's wind blowing. And, you know, somebody's going to ask, which way did you have the generator pointed? Because there are probably certain angles where it's going to be louder. In other words, if you're kind of on the exhaust side of the generator, it might be a little bit louder. On the other hand, if you've got the generator on the opposite side of your camper, or the exhaust pointed away, maybe pointed towards the woods or whatever, uh, it could be a lot more quiet. So to be fair, I would say, to me, it's not unreasonably loud. Uh, with that said, it is probably a little louder than a Honda or Yamaha. Uh, we can do some more tests in the future, perhaps, and get more of a precise number. But, you know, these things are a little bit ballpark when we're doing these kind of tests. Like, to me, it's not unreasonable. It's an inverter generator. It's going to be a lot quieter than any open frame generator. It never overloaded with the AC. Like, it never seemed to struggle running the air conditioner. So I really like the wheel kit overall. It works well as long as you keep your generator at the appropriate angle. If you lift it too high, then the back of the unit is gonna drag the ground. But I find that the unit is very easy to move once you have it on the ground. In fact, I, I would rather move one of these generators than a 2000 watt with no wheels. So you can see, I like the way the handle folds tight up against the body. Lift. Helps if you have a big beer belly, you can press it against. Not too bad. I mean, you can lift this thing in and out of a truck pretty well. I'd say the average guy can, can handle it quite nicely. And as you will see, I could probably get it in this truck without even lifting the tonneau cover. The lack of wheels on this side is actually an advantage because it fits quite snugly up against the bed of the pickup truck and it's not going to roll around back here. Otherwise, we'd have to use some kind of chocks and bungee cords to make sure it didn't slide. And when we were in Quartzsite, Arizona earlier this year, the big RV show, I actually spoke with a champion representative and he said that this is not random. <laughs> Uh, it, it was by design that the thing fits underneath the tonneau cover. Champion has thought about this stuff, and, and this is a key point to me. Champion is going very aggressively after the RV market. You know, they've thought about fitting it under a tonneau cover. They've thought about including an RV-ready outlet. They've thought about the convenience of a remote electric start. They've thought about dual fuel, and if you want a dual fuel model, you can get it. Uh, from the factory, no extra work required, it's turnkey. So Champion is very aggressively going after RV campers and I think it's good for all RV campers. Uh, Champion is going to keep Honda, Yamaha, Briggs and Stratton on their toes and they're going to deliver more value to you because they're providing competition. That's a good thing for all of us. If you want to read more reviews about this unit, just click the affiliate link uh, in the YouTube description of this video and it'll take you to the relevant Amazon page for this very model and you can see what other people have to say. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can catch all the updates about this generator in the future. Until next time, I'm Sean. This is Long Long Honeymoon where we say lo lo ho. Somebody off in the distance just fired up his generator, which I think is an open frame generator. Or maybe it's, it's a, a lawnmower. lawnmower. <laughs>